demonstrate how to perform a scheduled agent deployment task. And this is directed towards newer Avanti administrators, but this may be helpful for, for those that are inheriting a core from somebody else or, or you're wondering how to upgrade your agent configuration after you've done an upgrade. You can also see that I have devices that already have agents on them. There, I do want to update this Windows 10 up here, but there is also another device that I'm going to be using Unmanaged Device Discovery to locate as well. So there are about five steps to this. First, we need to make sure the scheduler account is configured. Then we need to identify which agent configuration we want to use. Third, we need to identify the device that will have the agent. Fourth, we need to create a scheduled task. And the fifth, we need to start the scheduled task. So the first thing, we need to make sure that our scheduler account has the proper rights and we actually have a scheduler account. So as you can see, I already have one in here. I am using a domain user. Not everybody likes to use an admin account. It's probably not best practice, but many people like to use service accounts here, domain service accounts. And these accounts need to have read, write, and execute access on the root of C on the endpoint devices that you are deploying an agent to. If you have a whole bunch of Linux systems, then, and you've got different credentials, let's say your domain administrator account or domain service account can't hit those machines, write to those machines, but you can add individual credentials here for Max, Linux, Windows, whatever you want, because it'll check them all in order, but it'll start with this one first. So just keep in mind, this needs read, write, execute access on the C drive. So once that's done, all right. So we're looking at a clean slate here. Um, I don't have any tabs open, because I want to show you this manually. So if you go to first, or sorry, we're on our st second step, which is identifying which agent configuration will be used. So we go to Tools, Configuration, Agent Configuration. So if you click on all configurations here, you'll see a bunch of different agent configurations that you have the ability to choose from. This is one I made on my own. I'm not gonna be using it in this demonstration, but these right here, any of the ones that say default in front, were created by or during 2018.3 install. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be pushing out to a Windows machine. If you look, so here's if you're upgrading your agents, your previously used agents, like I am right right here, I want to make sure that these agent configurations have the latest components. So they have a button here called Rebuild All. I'm going to click it. It takes about 15 to 20 seconds to complete. And you want to make sure you do this if you're upgrading your core server and need to get new agents out to your devices. Typically, the agents will still communicate back to the core server, but just to be safe, um, you want you want all this updated. That way, if a service update upgraded a component, a specific one, let's say the remote control component, and there was a bug that was fixed and service update, whatever, this is what you'll want to do before you push out a new agent, is the rebuild all button. So now that that's complete, and we've got our agent configuration selected, I am not going to play around with any of the agent settings in this demonstration. I'm just going to keep them to the defaults I I have. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to identify the, the devices that will have the agent. I am going to my all devices, and I already have a Windows 10 device here I want to update. But I also want to use Unmanaged Device Discovery to find another device that is new to my environment new to my lab, and I just want to make sure I get an agent on it. So go to Tools, Configuration, 
unmanaged device discovery. And as you can see, down here at the very bottom, we've got two different tabs. We're going to be using this later on, so I'm just calling attention to it. Okay, so we got unmanaged device discovery. Let's go ahead and search by using clicking this binoculars icon with the computers. Um, I'm going to start start a new one here. We're going to call this test. And then I already know the IP address of the device. You can choose to use a, a greater range than I am here. But for the sake of brevity, I'm going to just use this. There we go. And go ahead and scan now. You can also schedule these unmanaged device discovery scans to happen daily. Um, just look for, for new devices. All right, so we can see that the device was found and one de device was added. So let's go ahead and close this, close this. All right, so we have yet to, so we, we've found the devices we want, we found the aging configuration we want, but how do we create a task to push the agent out? So to do this, you go back to the agent configurations tab, you right click on your agent configuration and go to schedule agent deployment. So it opened up a third tab here called Scheduled Tasks. And you can find this tab by going to Tools, Distribution, Scheduled Tasks if you want to open that manually. But we got this open right here. So what we want to do is we want to click and drag the device we want and drop it right on the name of the task default Windows configuration. I've got another one up here. I'm going to delete it just so it doesn't confuse us. Okay, so we've got our, our scheduled task, but that's only just one of the devices. If we click all devices, we can see which devices are in here. So if I want to add a second one from unmanaged device discovery, same idea. You click and drag, hover over scheduled tasks, and drop it right onto default Windows configuration. All right, so they're stuck in pending status right now. They're not going to go anywhere because when we were setting up the scheduled task, we did not, it didn't even give us an option to set it. Um, so we can start it by right clicking, and there's, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm just going to cover one. Right click on it, go to start now, devices that did not try to run the task. And then we'll go ahead and refresh. And it's showing inactive now. So this will take about 10 to 15 minutes. A big question that people have, though, is how can you tell that it's actually running on the endpoint device? And so I am going to show you. So if we head over to the device itself. Now this may take a second to start, so I may have to pause the recording for a second. But if we go to Task Manager, Details. All right, so we haven't, it hasn't shown up yet. We're looking for a process called wscfg32.exe. Well, as you can see over here, it just created a temporary file called ldcfg. So that tells us that that scheduler account that we previously set up has read, write, and execute access on the C drive, I hope. And you can see it's writing. 
and we are expecting to see a particular application here run in a second. There we go. It took about three minutes for it to show up, two, three minutes, but we're looking at the WSCFG32.exe. And so we're going to the program files x86 land desk LD client, and you'll start to see files fill up here. So it looks like it's working. Another log is located. Another way to tell is going to program data, land desk, log on this machine, and you'll start to see a lot of the logs, especially this WSCFG32 log. So if we need to troubleshoot if something fails, if antivirus catches something, we can go ahead and open WSCFG32 and investigate what's going on. Getting a lot of succeeds there. So we'll close this. I'll pause the recording. Okay, so it looks like the Windows 10 device that I am going to connect to this window. I know that naming convention is kind of bad, um, but it looks like it successfully installed. 